In this video, I'm going to break down my AI or ML quant trading results of last year, going into my new details like how I build a portfolio, uh, the ML or AI strategies that I use to enter, to exit, uh, how to rebalance the portfolio, uh, how I use value investing in combination with quant trading. Uh, I will share the results, the challenges that I faced, uh, the discussion of trades, brokerage accounts, even tax issues. So any video that I publish in my YouTube channel, regardless, comes from my own personal experiences working in different prop trading firms, uh, quant hedge funds, consultant to quant hedge funds, and also my educational background comes from a purely STEM degree. And then I went on to do a master's in risk management and financial engineering. So what I say is purely from my own experiences and these strategies are built from these experiences that I have accumulated since the beginning of my career from 2010. So like 15 odd years or so now, but that does not mean anything. Experiences and strategies are always a work in progress. There are many traders or investors out there who have beaten me this year. So don't take any results uh, from me as something special. Always take any opinions, including mine, with a pinch of salt. And no strategy, no matter how smart or how AI-driven or data-backed, and who says it comes with guarantees. Uh, you can use my ideas and opinions as a source of inspiration, but the real, real goal for you is to develop your own strategies through your own unique experiences. So most people think or use MLO AI to predict prices and that approach is not the right way to trade. So I don't do that. I use ML or AI to improve an already existing strategy. So for instance, let's say I have a value investing or quant strategy that is working good. I will use ML or AI to improve the entries and exits. On top of that, I will use ML or AI to allocate the money for each position or strategy. Overall, the machine learning or AI is used to improve performance. I have like a big list of companies that I like. The idea is quite straightforward. When one of these companies becomes undervalued, it kind of gets my attention. So that's when I bring in the ML or AI models to generate an entry signal. Once I get that signal, I enter the trade. Uh, most people think it's just an entry signal as the most important thing, but in reality, how much you put in is the most important thing because that's your risk. So what I use is that I rely on a neural network, uh, specifically a long short-term memory model uh, to determine the position size for each trade. So what it does is that it calculates a portfolio allocation based on the data. And this methodology keeps it kind of systematic and consistent. Uh, and once all these things are done, there'll always be a rebalance situation. So rebalancing is kind of done only if there is a specific event at the market. Uh, it can be like a volatile uh, event, like a market kind of crashes something. So there'll be a certain stock which crashes more than some other stock. So then I kind of rebalance that portfolio. Sometimes I also do rebalancing based on a specific time frame, like maybe once a month or once every two months or so. Uh, so I've still a lot more to research and improve on this specific rebalancing area. So let's dive deeper into the strategies I use. My approach is a combination of trend following or momentum trading strategies and mean reverting strategies. Uh, so to manage this, I have multiple brokerage accounts, each tailored to different trading styles. Uh, for entries and exit, I rely heavily on decision tree classifiers and neural networks. Uh, I also use support vector machine classifier as a regime filter. Essentially, it kind of acts like a circuit breaker. So if certain conditions like extreme market volatility or specific price changes are triggered, the SVM model shuts down all positions. Uh, for example, if like the market volatility crosses a crazy threshold, the SVM classifier will kind of signal me to close everything. So it's kind of like a kill switch to manage risks in extreme scenarios. Uh, so that's essentially the entire strategy in a nutshell. Identifying value, timing, entry and exit signals with machine learning, portfolio allocation with machine learning and AI and rebalancing at specific periods or massive market movements. Uh, so just before I go deeper into the strategy, uh, making videos is quite time consuming. Uh, now I'm on a holiday as well, hence the delay with this video. Uh, 
uh, this should have been up a few weeks ago so i'm not a big fan of making too many videos as you can see in my channel i just don't have the time so i'm thinking of starting a paid newsletter if there is sufficient interest so that i can communicate more content and that too faster so if you're really interested in it please leave your interest in the link in the description and if there are enough interest i might go on and start one so this portfolio we'll be discussing is long only portfolio because i have like three accounts I've got like two personal accounts and one company account. So the company account, I won't be giving away information because of the cybersecurity reasons and the fund size is quite large. So I don't want to risk anything by putting too much information out there. A uh, company account is quite advantageous from a tax perspective, which I'll discuss in a bit. So uh, one of my personal brokerage account is basically where I trade aggressively and that's my interactive brokers account, which is US based. Uh, the other brokerage account is with a local bank account. So I live in Dubai for tax reasons. Uh, so basically the whole advantage of having a company trading account, regardless of where you stay, is that you can have expenses on the company account and then you just have to pay taxes outside of that. And also in Dubai or any other tax haven, there is no income tax. So you tend to save quite a lot over the long term. Now for company account, regardless, dividends are taxed from the source when the company pays you dividends. So you have no way of escaping that one, regardless of where you stay. Um, so I'm thinking of doing a complete video on taxes and how traders can save money by moving to different locations and creating company accounts and things around those lines. So if you're quite interested in that, leave a comment. And if there is sufficient interest, I will make a video on that one. Um, coming back, so the second brokerage account is with a local bank in Dubai. So that one is quite convenient to me. Uh, like I can transfer the funds within seconds and make a trade. But the problem is that the commissions are quite large. As compared to interactive brokers, the commissions are quite less. But transferring money from Dubai to US can take a few hours, sometimes more than a day, depending on what time. Uh, you initiate the transfer so because commissions in the local brokerage account is quite high i make sure that trades are long term in that account but regardless majority of my trades uh, are based on the company accounts anyways the portfolio we're discussing here is my personal account which is long only i also do short trades in my company account but the problem again with short trades uh, is that stocks tend to be much more unpredictable for short trades uh, like you have like short squeeze and things like that so what i do is that i only perform short trades in s p 500 index specifically uh, mean reverting strategies so indexes have a certain predictability that works well with short trades as compared to stocks which is something that i have found over years of research and testing um, I'm not going to dive in deeper into how I design, create or train these strategies in this video. If you're curious about that, I've already covered topics like regression, uh, neural networks and decision trees in the previous videos. Uh, feel free to check those out if you want to learn more about the process behind these strategies. Okay, so this is the Interactive Brokers account. Uh, portfolio performance so I'm gonna blur some of the things out just purely from for security reasons you know just to be on the safe side uh, so this is the portfolio performance today is January the 5th Sunday so uh, as of now it's like 44% uh, with respect to one year so if I can do a benchmark of S&P 500 here so there are two accounts that I uh, trade primarily my quantitative trading strategy so this one account here and there's another account as well just like a local uh, broker so i'll show both of them uh, so in this as of i think january the first if you go so the portfolio performance was 41 percent and the s p 500 was 21.38 percent so if you go to january 5th it's 22 percent and the portfolio performance is 44 percent so now let's compare the other uh, indexes uh, it's the Nasdaq again, uh, beat the Nasdaq as well. Um, Russell 2000, that's, that's pretty clear. Russell had a horrible year. Um, DAX again, uh, beat DAX. And then, I don't know what N225 is. Um, the Hang Seng Index, this had a pretty good year, this one. At one point it was like 55% HSI and then, but even then HSI by the end of the year, it was the 33%. Um, so let me just go into the statements of this. Um, so I'll just go statements. And 
and let's do the month to month summary daily custom date range and then go for January the first do yeah and then let's see the view HTML okay so uh, positions and mark to mark loss so these are some of the trades that I have done so some of them are still uh, the position is still open some of them the position has been closed so you can see uh, a plethora of trades here so Apple ASML uh, Bellevue so Bellevue scan I've done in two places so I've done it in this account and then the other account which I'll show in a bit I've also done Tesla in the other account as well so uh, Belfi is kind of here it's a loss but in the other side it's like quite a bit of a profit because sometimes I uh, allocate the money different sides uh, depending on how much positions are there in each account just to be on the safe side because of these brokers and everything you know you can't trust them all the time so uh, there's a plethora of trades says from Meta, Greenbrick Partners, uh, even GameStop which actually was a, a bit of a loss um, Uber, U-Haul, some of them are on a trade. So if you see the current, uh, so that column will tell if you're on a trade. And you can see the 0 0.5 and 0 0.7. So these are uh, basically done because the quantitative platform tells me, hey, this is what you should be doing. This is the amount of money that should be allocated for this portfolio. Uh, so for that, I use neural networks long short term memory. So they will actually tell me that the allocation of the portfolio so that you get the best CAGR to drawdown ratio. Uh, so you can see 0 0.5 and thanks to Interactive Brokers fractional share facility, even if you don't want to invest a lot of money, you can actually invest a, a certain a point fraction of the specific stock. So this is the uh, profit for this year. Uh, I also did one option trade that was pretty recent actually, and that was a leap trade on Dino. And I made like, I think I invested like almost $1,000 uh, and made like 54 Dollars on this. That's like 5%, but you might think 5% is uh, not significant, but 5%, I think it did in like three days or something, uh, that specific trade. But in reality, it's, if you're looking from a CAGR perspective, uh, that 5% on one trade is like 0.5 uh, to the power 52. So uh, minus one into 100. So if you look at it from a pure CAGR perspective, it's actually 1,164%. That's like the worst case scenario. But uh, these kind of trades are something that's kind of like, sometimes I actually look through the portfolio, look through all the positions, and then I, I actually feed into the quant portfolio, and then uh, they'll tell me how much I should risk for uh, this specific trade. And, and at that point in time, I would put in a certain amount of money to get the return on that. And so it's like a really small position, just $1,000, but maybe $54 in just a few days. You can see a bit of a Canadian dollar here. That's because of the high vision systems uh, trade, which is still open. Uh, I think it might, I might hold it on for a while unless the uh, strategy tells me to close the position. And obviously this one, Dino as well. And Bellevue Scandal is also another uh, Canadian position, I reckon. Um, yeah, so overall that's that. And then if you can look at the deposits and withdrawal, so it's not like from the beginning I put in like 29000 or $30,000. So each time I've actually put in money, uh, depending on the scenario. So the entirety of this year I put in like $15,000 because this whole portfolio has been purely from a quant based uh, portfolio. So I've got another portfolio which I use value based, purely value based strategy as well. Because sometimes there could be one trade here or there which is you know, just for the convenience and maybe there's not enough money in the other side. Uh, so I need to enter a value-based position on this side or a quant-based position on that side. So you can see I've put in money in the March and then April. And then for a long time, I didn't put some money. And then October and November, I put in some money as well. So overall, it's uh, $15,000. Uh, and then there's dividends here, like lots of dividends coming in uh, from all these stocks. And then there's a withholding tax as well. Uh, so yeah. So overall, there is that. Then there is the other thing of uh, uh, time-weighted rate of return as well. So I don't know how they calculated what's the difference between this one and the uh, overall portfolio performance of 44%. So time-weighted return, I think they calculated differently based on how much money you put in. It depends on the cash flow and things like that. Uh, so time rate return is 36.33, which is again uh, beating the S&P 500 buy and hold. So I'm a, I think I might be a bit on the commission side. I paid $72 in commission and the other fees 100 But these are all comes in tandem with what my expected uh, performance in the quant portfolio is. So uh, mostly just to say, just to, you know, to give a general idea, it's like uh, I have 
uh, support vector machine and decision tree, which literally tells me whether to, so sometimes I might shut down all the decisions uh, if they are volatility, if a specific thing can go up. And then there is the neural networks, which I generally use uh, to basically get an idea uh, of how much I should allocate. So I think that has been the biggest efficient performance here, like how much money should I allocate to each portfolio. So let me go to the other brokerage account. Okay, so this is the uh, the other account. So this account is on my mobile platform, so I don't have it installed on my computer. So actually this is a screen recording uh, of the uh, portfolio performance of this account. So at this moment, I have, I think, close to $16,000 there. So overall, if you combine them both, it's, 30 plus, it's like $45,000 just from a quantitative trading account performance. Um, and at the moment, there is Alphabet and Amazon, which is still on an open position. I haven't closed this position yet, and that is at 47% and Amazon at 20%. Um, so this has been this position has been there for a while. Um, so maybe I think it could be coming from the previous year as well. But, but in this account, I've just barely beaten the S&P 500 by maybe like a few percentage points. So just like let it load down and we'll just change this to um yeah here it is so the s p 500 was 25.13 percent here and this one i had a return of 27 percent. so it's just slightly uh, over the expected return so now if you can go into some of the trades that i did so you can see here there is bell fuse which made a profit of 22 percent here uh, alphabet which is 38 percent but you know there's um uh, closing position and also opening position. Also, there is the Amazon, 20%, and Harvard Hughes Holdings, PayPal Holdings, which was a loss. Tesla here is a loss of 25%, but then if you uh, can go down into the other one, uh, where is Tesla? Tesla is still on an open profit of $4,400. Um, just go back to this one again. And then same thing goes with Belfi Scan. We've got a profit here of 689 but then here, uh, we were actually on a loss of $12. So this is just purely because, you know, I didn't have funds there, so I have to put something here and things like that. So um, this one, there's like minimalistic because the commissions on this broker is pretty high. Uh, so I don't want to make lots of changes into this account. So Interactive Brokers commissions are slightly lower than this local broker here that I have. Um, yeah, but overall, uh, it's been a pretty decent uh, return. So hope you got some gist on some of my approach to my quant trading. Again, there's like lots of room for improvement out there. And there are many traders who have outperformed me last year and will outperform me in the future. My goal is quite minimal and I reckon you should have the same uh, to beat the CAGR of S&P 500 by and hold over the long term. And that's my focus. Uh, this should be kind of like a sweet spot in the amount of risk that you take as we're all trying to make money for ourselves and our family in a stable way. And I personally don't want to go all guns blazing, you know, by taking lots of risk. So if I want more reward, I can take more risk, but that would obviously come uh, with volatile portfolio and at the cost of my uh, sanity. If you have any questions to get a deeper understanding or some other content you want to create, uh, put in the comment section and I will be happy to answer. Have a great day. Bye-bye.